Welcome, everyone. Uh, thanks for uh, uh, joining the, the first part of a uh, uh, four-part series on building great teams. And today, we're going to talk about the uh, uh, increasing tech productivity and, and, in particular, engineering uh, productivity. Uh, my name is uh, Dan Teodosio. I'm going to take uh, uh, one minute to introduce myself to those of you whom I uh, haven't met uh, uh, yet. I've, I'm very passionate about building great teams to build great products. I have uh, over 30 years of industry experience, uh, which is a mix of scale-ups. I was the CTO of Criteo and Onfido. Uh, large companies, I used to work for Google, Microsoft, Hewlett-Packard, and startups. I was a founder um, twice myself, uh, VP Engineering for, for startups and uh, a technical advisor uh, over the years. I've done quite a bit of hiring. I uh, um, helped hire over 1,500 people over the years, mostly engineers, of course, but also product support, HR, finance, uh, at all levels from uh, ICs to, to C-level. And I had the opportunity to scale high-performance engineering and research teams to over 600 people at uh, uh, Criteo a few years ago. I'm currently an EIR at Balderton, and I'm here to uh, uh, help you. So uh, just a couple of uh, uh, logistical points before we, uh, uh, we dive in. Uh, we're going to basically spend half the time with, uh, with the presentation. And then uh, uh, in, the, in the second half, I'm going to answer uh, any questions you, uh, uh, you may have. So um, as, I, as I talk, please uh, type in your uh, questions into uh, the, the Zoom chat, uh, not the Zoom Q&A. Uh, and uh, uh, then uh, in the second half, we'll, uh, uh, we'll pick up these questions uh, uh, and uh, uh, basically uh, uh, answer, uh, uh, answer them. Uh, Michael here is going to help us uh, uh, moderate the, the questions. So with that, I think everyone agrees that productivity is key, but uh, there's a different, uh, difficult question about what software engineering productivity uh, actually means. So that's going to be the topic of uh, uh, this presentation. And we're going to cover three uh, things. The first one is uh, a difficult conversation with, uh, uh, with your CEO, where they ask you to uh, uh, measure productivity. The second part is going to be about how to increase engineering uh, uh, productivity, short term and longer uh, term. And the third part is going to ask the question uh, about whether engineering productivity by itself is sufficient. And you guessed it. The answer is going to be no. So let's start with that difficult conversation with your uh, CEO. So let's, let's say you're the CTO of Singular.ai, uh, uh, an ML-based uh, uh, company. And one day your CEO has a conversation with you. And they tell you that they would like you to track and increase engineering and research velocity. So uh, just as an aside, um, almost every CEO who doesn't have a software engineering background will, will ask about tracking engineering uh, uh, velocity. And uh, so velocity and productivity are now your, your main uh, uh, goals. And your CEO is right to ask about this, right? I mean, that's very important. Uh, whether you're pre uh, or post product market fit, right? I mean, if you're pre product market fit, then you need to be able to iterate very fast, test hypotheses, do things in a quick and dirty uh, mode and just be super, super uh, agile. And if you're post product market fit, then uh, you need to be able to scale uh, the business in a uh, uh, solid uh, manner. So after this conversation, you, you start thinking about uh, uh, what should you track and uh, optimize? Um, and you come up with ideas, right? Maybe it's Git pull requests per week. Maybe it's uh, agile story points completed per sprint, frequency of releases, number of models uh, trained per week, uh, number of outstanding uh, bugs. Should you track individual metrics? Should you track team metrics? All of that is not, uh, uh, not quite clear. In fact, if you look at this uh, quote from Ken Thompson at the, at the top here, um, it's kind of unsettling, right? Because he talks about being very productive when he was able to discard a thousand lines of uh, uh, code. So here's a, a fun fact uh, that I lived through. Uh, one of the large companies I, uh, I worked for at some point uh, decided to track uh, 
engineering productivity by looking at lines of code per engineer per day. And they, they did the measurement for uh, a couple of months and then they um, realized there was a population of engineers who uh, were only producing very few lines of code per day, maybe one or two uh, for, uh, for some of them. So clearly, right, these were slackers, should be fired. Uh, they were not productive. Well, not so fast. Uh, because it turned out uh, these uh, these engineers were actually uh, tracking down some very difficult uh, uh, bugs in uh, operating system code, and it was taking them weeks to to be able to reproduce and understand the bugs. And typically, the fixes were not that long, right? So, hence the slow productivity in terms of uh, uh, lines of code per uh, uh, per day. So maybe that's not a good uh, uh, metric. In fact. The more you think about it, the more you realize that the uh, relevant metrics are actually hard to come by. Uh, and you need to know you're measuring the right thing, right? I mean, just because you're you're measuring something doesn't mean it's relevant. Uh, furthermore, uh, measures can and will be gamed by engineers, whether consciously or subconsciously. Engineers are very, very good at optimizing uh, uh, things. And so you run uh, head on into Goodhart's law, which says that when a measure becomes a target, it ceases to be a good measure. And you don't want to be engaging in things like uh, craniology. If you're not familiar with that, uh, at the end of the 19th century, this was uh, kind of very trendy. Uh, um, quote unquote scientists were trying to uh, uh, measure uh, uh, skull uh, uh, characteristics and infer intellectual abilities, obviously. Not a very productive exercise. Okay, so now you say, okay, I'm gonna ask an experienced friend for uh, advice. Let's see what she tells me. So she listens to you and uh, she basically advises you to uh, start analyzing the situation by using your gut feeling. I know this is not very quantitative, but still. So uh, based on your prior experience with similar uh, projects, how do you feel about things? Do you feel things are slow or are moving fast from an engineering uh, perspective? Do you feel you're delivering value to your customers? Uh, can you compare yourself to, uh, uh, to other companies? So you need to be careful when you do this because uh, you wanna make sure you compare apples to apples, especially when you talk to your uh, CFO, you can very easily get into discussions like, uh, oh, but look, they're doing uh, uh, something similar with uh, half the people. Well. Maybe yes, maybe no, right? I mean, you, you have to uh, pay attention whether it's, it's really comparable. And then she suggests that you use two uh, uh, kind of uh, metrics. Uh, one is external. Uh, so those would be customer metrics that reflect the value delivered to and the impact you're having on your customers. And the other kind of metrics is internal, uh, which is really for uh, you and your team only. Uh, to understand if you have any uh, sources of friction or overhead. Okay, so that gives you an idea. And uh, now you go back to, uh, to your CEO with a uh, proposal. And uh, you say, okay, we're going to put in place some external metrics for customer value and impact. And these metrics need to be owned by several, in fact, all of the functions, not, not just by engineering. And then in addition to that, you'll provide them with uh, information about uh, how your team team's bandwidth is used currently, what initiatives uh, uh, they're working on, and the rough sense for uh, uh, how, how you're making progress on your uh, deliverables. So this makes a lot more sense than uh, uh, velocity with a small v and uh, definitely velocity with a capital V, right, in the, uh, in the agile uh, uh, sense. Because really what you want to do is measure outcomes. In fact, if you look at the uh, picture on the right, there is clearly a difference between velocity and outcome. Here, velocity was very good. Uh, outcome, I would say, is suboptimal. And uh, uh, you know, furthermore, if you provide this information, you, you can discuss bandwidth allocation, and you can give people a qualitative sense of progress. OK, so now. You have to go and uh, uh, try to uh, to improve your uh, engineering team's productivity. So uh, I have good news and bad news about that. The good news is that there are some relatively short-term fixes that unfortunately will only allow you to reap about 20, 30% of the uh, of the benefits. And in fact, the bad news is most most benefits uh, are only reaped over uh, over the long term. 
but there are things you can do right uh, to improve within two to three quarters not instantaneously but still on a on a reasonably short uh, time frame um, before you start doing any of these uh, very important um, you need to involve your team in this process from day one so productivity is not something you can improve from the top by dictating how things uh, uh, should be done you need to make uh, your your team mem members not part of the uh, problem but also part of the solution so clearly one of the things you can do uh, relatively quickly is to uh, try to increase focus if you see that your team has too many meetings or meetings with too many people in them or any other kind of interruptions it's basically trying to reduce these uh, uh, interruptions you can try to provide relative stability over the quarter right so start doing some uh, okrs even if it's a rough process initially it's important that your team be allowed to focus uh, and uh, uh, have visibility into what they're expected to do over the coming uh, uh, months. Very important, try to focus on uh, small or smaller and frequent deliverables. So instead of trying to boil the ocean uh, and uh, uh, have projects that don't produce any clear deliverables for a month, uh, try try to have some constant stream of uh, uh, of stuff that's uh, uh, that's getting uh, released very important because otherwise you're essentially accumulating risk uh in the uh in the project and uh it's very important that uh, customers for instance see those deliverables and uh, can give you feedback right and then uh you need to be careful how uh your engineering team's bandwidth is uh, uh spent right uh, especially if you're a, a product driven company which most of you uh, are um, you need to manage very carefully how much uh, how much of customer specific work you do, and if you find out that you're doing more than let's say 10, 15 percent uh, of customer specific work in terms of uh, team uh, uh, bandwidth, then that's a red flag. The figure on the right uh, sort of illustrates this idea, right? If uh, if the entire box is your available engineering bandwidth then uh, you want to allocate a large fraction of it to uh, a product roadmap. And so input for that will, will come from uh, uh, your, your product folks. And then you want to leave some uh, much smaller piece uh, for, uh, uh, for customer uh, requests, which don't fit into the roadmap. And basically, that should be prioritized uh, by, uh, by sales. And keeping that boundary uh, between these two parts of the uh, of the box, between the OKR part and uh, the Kanban part, um, keeping that boundary as fixed as possible uh, during a quarter is very important to basically allow your engineering team to uh, uh, to focus on the on the roadmap. Okay, I mentioned uh, uh, most of the of the benefits actually come over the the long term uh, and. Uh, it's a long journey. In fact, you can argue uh, that uh, uh, the, the journey is the goal, right? It's a never-ending uh, uh, journey. You can constantly uh, uh, improve, but um, uh, if you keep at it, then uh, very significant benefits can uh, accumulate over, uh, over time. So there are three things to uh, mainly to uh, invest in to get these long-term uh, uh, benefits. One is building a great team. Second one is uh, making sure you have a lean and effective org structure. And the third one is making sure you have a solid tech foundation and the proper tooling for your developers to be effective. Let me start with building a great team. This is really a teaser for the last two parts of, uh, of this series. Uh, and, uh, um, you know, I'm not going to tell you anything uh, new uh, when I'm going to say hire very, very smart uh, people, um, because smart people attract uh, other very smart people, and uh, great engineers can do a lot more than uh, um, average ones, uh, let's say. But it's not only hiring smart, but also hiring uh, culturally aligned uh, people, that's important. Uh, because sometimes you can see uh, uh, very smart engineers who just won't fit into uh, uh, the culture of uh, your company. If you bring them in, they're going to do more damage than, uh, uh, than good. So you need to have both of these uh, uh, characteristics. 
you need to pay attention to the mix of seniority uh, and um, favor more senior uh, talent uh, initially, especially as a, as a small uh, uh, startup. And yes, I know it's uh, uh, much more difficult and much more expensive to hire that kind of talent, but uh, uh, it will pay back uh, uh, over time, right? The risk, if, if, if you have a, um, a seniority distribution that's shifted too much to the left is that uh, um, people are gonna start making avoidable mistakes, right? So uh, more senior people will have seen uh, how a good development process uh, works, what what a good design uh, uh, looks like, um, what it what it means to uh, to work on scalability, and uh, you know they they'll be able to guide more junior people, right? If you only have junior people, those uh, this will turn into a, a science uh, experiment very uh, very quickly. You want to keep teams uh, light as light as possible and uh, uh, actually slightly hungry. So I'm not saying understaff them. Uh, dramatically, but I think as a philosophy, it's good to uh, understaff just a tiny little bit because that helps uh, uh, people focus on what's essential and doesn't leave time for for stuff that really doesn't matter that uh, uh, that much. And last but not least, uh, you need to pay attention to uh, uh, to churn. Uh, if you have significant uh, uh, churn in your engineering team. And by that, I mean uh, anything above 15, 20% per year, uh, that can be absolutely devastating uh, to, uh, to your engineering team's uh, productivity. So the second thing I, I mentioned was uh, lean and effective uh, org structure. And uh, again, this is a teaser for part three. Uh, the, the key uh, thing here is evolving uh, such an uh, um, org structure. There's a famous quote from uh, Eric Schmidt, uh, who basically talked about the uh, um, processes at Google breaking every time they, they grew an order of magnitude. And I must say, I almost agree with, uh, uh, with Eric Schmidt, almost. Uh, I think I would make a small correction here, which is, uh, yes, order of magnitude, but in binary. So in fact, I've, uh, in my experience, every time things double in size, whether it's number of customers, traffic, whatnot, um, some or many processes will, uh, uh, will break. And so what that means is that if you're a high growth uh, startup, then um, you, you basically need to be extremely agile in terms of adapting to, uh, uh, to your new uh, uh, problem domain, if you, uh, uh, if you wish. So obviously you need to have a very strong culture of focusing on the uh, customer. You need to pr promote empowerment uh, and collaboration in your uh, team. Um, your team needs to be motivated and aligned uh, around the right uh, uh, kind of uh, values. And one sort of remark here is uh, try to avoid too much organizational uh, innovation. Um, and be careful about adopting uh, idealized models. Uh, there's a uh, 2012 paper from uh, uh, Spotify uh, that details that uh, idealized model of uh, uh, squads and tribes and guilds and whatnot. And I, I've talked to three senior people who were at Spotify at that time, and this model never worked for Spotify. And so it's like, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, talking, uh, uh, talking to your doctor, it's like uh, uh, do uh, uh, do what I say, not not what I do myself, right? <laughs> it's, um, so you need to be a little bit careful about this. And then the the third thing I mentioned uh, is uh, make sure you have a solid tech foundation and uh, tooling. So doing proper designs is very important, and uh, uh, you know it. Uh, takes a little bit more time than just uh, hacking things in random manners, but uh, uh, it can pay back very, very significantly uh, uh, down the line. Having best coding practices, having at least some kind of technical uh, uh, documentation uh, all matter. It's important to invest in dev tooling and having a great uh, uh, continuous integration pipeline. Uh, there is two main characteristics of that. One is the stability of the pipeline, um, and the other one is latency. So stability is important because if you have flaky tests in your uh, uh, pipeline, then uh, engineers will eventually uh, disable these tests because they're meaningless. And so 
uh, you're 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 not going to have uh, uh, good good coverage. And uh, uh, latency is very important because uh, uh, people should not have to wait uh, for very long for uh, for the pipeline to uh, to run. It's important also to invest in some kind of developer sandbox that allows people to uh, uh, try things out locally locally or sorry in their own environment it could be on their machine it could be in the cloud but uh, uh, some environment that allows them to spin up the product uh, and try new things very quickly um, you have to make sure that uh, the team makes proper use of systems and tools so I've seen several companies where um, there's for instance a confusion between Slack and Jira uh, and Slack was was never meant to be used as a bug tracking system and so if uh, if uh, your your team falls into this trap, it's not very good because it's impossible to run any kind of uh, uh, reports, do any queries on on bugs that are discussed only in Slack and are are not tracked in uh, in Jira. Um, trying to put a more mature uh, quarterly OKRs process in place is very important. Um, leaving bandwidth uh, for your team to do technical work, uh, whether that's uh, paying back the tech debt or uh, working on improving the, the tech infrastructure is very, very important. And uh, uh, something like 20, 25% of uh, the engineering bandwidth uh, sounds in many cases like, uh, like the right trade-off, right? It's, uh, um, it's something that will pay back uh, over time. And then, as I mentioned before, keeping track of internal metrics, uh, things like release frequency, Rollback frequency, very important. I've seen in the past a very strong correlation between the number of unreleased commits and uh, the likelihood of a rollback um, being required for, uh, for release number of open bugs and then pipeline stability. And last but not least, uh, dog fooding, which uh, I think is uh, nowadays called uh, ice creaming. Um, make sure that your engineers use the product. So very, very important. They need to have hands-on experience with the product and needs to be continuous, not a one-time uh, thing, right? So if, if you're a B2C um, company, then uh, uh, maybe that's a little bit uh, uh, easier. Uh, but even if you're a B2B company, um, you, can, uh, uh, you can achieve that, uh, for instance, by, uh, uh, by having a special uh, uh, dog fooding environment uh, where where people can play uh, uh, with the product and impersonate your your customers and see what the experience for uh, uh, your customers is. Okay, so that brings us to the last part, which is uh, taking a step back and uh, asking ourselves the question whether engineering productivity is sufficient by itself. So I'm going to start by stating the obvious, which is that customers should be top of mind for everyone. Uh, in the company. So every single function in the company needs to understand the customer and needs to understand how the company delivers value for the, uh, for the customer. And what, what that means in practice is that everyone needs to agree uh, on a set of metrics that reflect this value delivered to the customer. And everyone needs to track these metrics, right? Because that's, that's your proxy for uh, understanding whether uh, what you're selling to your customers brings, brings them enough value. Uh, sometimes it's difficult to have metrics that uh, uh, will will vary very quickly, uh, depending on uh, uh, on your specific uh, uh, product. In those cases, I think it's very important to use leading uh, uh, metrics that will give you a sense of uh, direction uh, of where the trailing ones uh, will uh, will go over time. Very important uh, um, thing to, to note, uh, some companies confuse uh, sign off by the PM or PO uh, for, for a feature, let's say, as meaning done, right? The, the PO said it's, uh, it's good, so we're, we're done, uh, that's it. And that's not at all true, right? And that's, uh, uh, that's something that uh, um, when, when, uh, uh, when, I see, when I see this kind of, uh, uh, behavior, uh, I, I know that there's a problem with closing the loop, right, uh, with the customers, right? So really done is only when the customer KPIs are reached, right? It doesn't matter in the end what the PO uh, uh, says. They could think it's done, but in fact, the customer may not like the feature or they may not think it brings them enough uh, um, value, right? And so really done is uh, when when you see the, uh, uh, the metrics uh, get to where 
uh, you expect them to be. And also, communication patterns in the company are quite important. Um, you see uh, on the uh, bottom left an anti-pattern that you should uh, avoid, which is a kind of snake, right? Uh, um, engineering only talks to product, product mostly talks with sales, and a little bit with, with customers, and sales obviously talks to customers, right? Um, in fact, everyone should be talking uh, to, to a varying extent to, to everyone else. Uh, and so it's very important that engineers actually do talk to customers, see how customers experience uh, the product, see what kind of uh, um, issues customers have with a, with a product, and they do this in a first-hand manner. So now we get to uh, discuss what velocity uh, really means, right? And uh, in, in my mind, velocity really is about delivering value to customers, and it's not about delivering features. Uh, you could deliver many, many features to, uh, to customers and very little uh, value. Um, and so understanding that that distinction is, is very um, important because Basically, what it says is that engineering is only one critical uh, component, uh, which has to work well, right? It's necessary, but it's not sufficient. And uh, furthermore, uh, it's the component that, in a sense, uh, produces what I would call linear gains, right? Let's say you double your, your engineering uh, uh, productivity based on, uh, uh, on some metric. Unfortunately, product complexity is uh, what I would call as uh, exponential, right? The, the state of possibilities that you need to explore is uh, extremely large. And if you're um, not able to narrow down, right, to uh, testing a, a handful of hypotheses, understanding very quickly uh, which direction you need to go in and then follow that direction, then uh, you're in trouble because... Um, any lack of focus in product uh, risks obliterating any engineering gains that, uh, uh, that you may have. So once again, to track velocity, and this is lowercase v, again, not, uh, uh, not the agile notion, uh, you need to track delivery of customer value. And your entire company needs to uh, be a learning and delivery uh, machine. You need to val validate um, that what you're doing delivers value uh, uh, to, uh, to your customers and then execute, turn the crank uh, on that. And it's important that uh, all the functions work together on this. And in fact, if you look at uh, um, successful, very successful companies, they all share this common trait, right? Uh, it's, it's one big execution uh, uh, machine. So uh, the relationship between product and engineering is kind of a, a special one and very, very uh, important one. Um, you need to make sure that there's a very strong culture of working together. Uh, I mentioned the, the common understanding uh, of the customer, the shared responsibility for the metrics. There's also uh, the negotiation part, right? Product is always uh, gonna push engineering uh, and that's very healthy. To, to do more, right? But sometimes hard choices need to be uh, made, right? And teams cannot quote unquote focus on uh, everything. So you need to be ready to uh, agree on what the priorities are and then kill some things to invest more in the things that really matter, right? In uh, uh, Larry Page's uh, words, uh, put more wood behind fewer arrows. And you need to be in a mindset together uh, with product of iterating and testing. So test hypotheses quickly and cheaply. This many times start, starts without involving any kind of coding, right? Sometimes product can, can just test things in other ways than uh, uh, by having them implemented. Uh, but then of course you need to be able to, uh, to do uh, uh, A-B tests and you need to uh, uh, have the, the capability of doing uh, alpha and beta releases uh, and learning from, uh, from your customers. And in this whole process, you, you, you need to make sure that you're constantly striving for, uh, uh, for excellence. So uh, it's very important to understand the uh, difference between MVP and MWP, right? Minimum value product versus minimum wow product. So to summarize, um, basically, um, you, you need to agree on what customer value means for your company and how to measure it. 
uh, optimize the things that matter for your customers. Um, you should never tackle uh, engineering productivity, uh, productivity in isolation, but look at the machinery uh, as a whole, at all the functions and understand whether they're working together uh, well. And your main targets are not internal engineering uh, metrics, right? These metrics are very valuable uh, for, for the engineering uh, team, but um, they're, they're not the primary thing that, uh, uh, that you need to optimize as a, uh, as a company. I'm not saying that the engineering team should not optimize them, but you should focus on the, on the customer metrics overall. And uh, um, patience is a virtue here. So uh, unfortunately, Improving productivity is a long-term endeavor. If you start investing early, you'll reap uh, the benefits early, but uh, um, it's important that um, everyone understands that uh, uh, this rarely can be fixed uh, in a quick manner. <laughs>